Hello everyone, and today we're going to be talking about occupancy grid mapping. Occupancy grid mapping is a really simple and easy mapping algorithm that we can use, and it's what you'll be using this week in your exercise. To do occupancy grid mapping, we discretize the world into a grid, and at each grid cell, we try to represent whether it is occupied or not, which essentially means whether there is an obstacle there or not. Can we drive over it? Can we not drive over it? Now this grid is fixed in size before we start. It doesn't grow and shrink over time, typically. Uh, there are variations where we tend to do this, but for our problem, we won't. And the grid can be attached to a body frame, and it can move. So if you remember from week two, we had that little grid that would follow essentially around the robot, using our image space detections of the red to then do a flat ground plane projection. This was an occupancy grid map centered on the robot's body frame. For a visual representation of what an occupancy grid map would look like is what we have here. So we have our map, and then we have our robot's position here. And it could be something like a camera, like we used in week two, to figure out where the red in the image would show up on the ground plane. So we could say this is a section of red we would want to avoid, or this is a whole section of red that we want to avoid based on our camera image. Uh, and the important thing to represent is you want to show things that are occupied and increase their likelihood of being occupied, and also show things that are not occupied and decrease their likelihood of being occupied. And we have this third idea which is occlusion. Since we can't see grid cells over here, we don't want to change their likelihood of being occupied or not occupied because we can't see them. This is a really common thing people mess up with occupancy grid mapping. You need all three representations for things to work. You need ideas of what is occupied, what is not occupied, and what can you not see. One way we can do occupancy grids is we can lean back on our ideas of probability, and we can say that each grid cell represents a random variable, which is the probability that it is occupied. So this is a binary random variable. The grid cell is either occupied or not occupied. Therefore, we can use a fun little trick from probability down here that says that the probability it is free is just one minus the probability it is occupied, because since these are only two events in the sample space, they must sum to one. And then let's go back to some notation. So remember, x, a vector x, is always going to represent our robot state. u will represent a control. z will represent our sensor readings. And then we'll have this m which is a probability between 0 and 1, and this will represent the probability that each grid cell is occupied. So for occupancy grid mapping, we're going to use three assumptions. The first is that a cell is either free or occupied. It can't be some third option that we don't know about. The second assumption is that the world is static. That means there are no moving obstacles in the world. This isn't a hard assumption. You can get by with some moving obstacles, but to truly represent a moving obstacle just completely ruins the, the probability math that we have here. So it makes sense for us to assume the world is static, and if it's not, we'll handle it the best that we can. The third thing is that each grid cell is independent of each other, and essentially what that means is if I have two grid cells here, and this one is occupied, it does not say anything about the probability that the one next to it is occupied. This is not necessarily true, because a lot of times our sensor models would make more sense for us to represent it this way, but this allows us to break the problem into estimating if each grid cell is occupied or not occupied independently, rather than trying to estimate everything together, which would make the probability distribution significantly more complicated. So using that third assumption, we can do this here. So we're trying to figure out what our map is, and this capital M represents the entire map. So what is the best map? Because remember, the star represents best. And that is going to be the map such that the probability of the map, given our history of states, our history of controls, and our history of sensor readings, what map makes the most sense, given our probabilistic representations of everything? And since we had that independent property, we can split this into essentially a product, since we're saying that each grid cell itself is independent. Now that's just a high level overview of occupancy grids. We're going to be going a lot more into the math and deriving what it would look like to do a probabilistic update on each one of these in the next video.